issue. Let's give the government more time. Let's open doors for purposeful dialogue with the government. As I mentioned earlier, there are measures taken by the government to nip our challenges in the board. In conclusion, I want to reaffirm the commitment of the House of Representatives to stand with you, to work with you, and to ensure that your future is bright. A lawmaker from Edo State also adds his voice to calls for an end to violent protests in the country. He believes this is a setback for the country. Having observed the nationwide protest, we commend the youths and Nigerians in general for the manner they have conducted themselves. We appeal for calm while imploring all Nigerians to bring the protest to an end. Life is politics. In Nigeria, almost every part of our lives is touched by the politics we play. Governance, legislative matters, the economy, security, foreign affairs, internal affairs. Have a feel as strategic plays in the political space determine how we live in Nigeria. The players, the drama, chess piece moves. Be kept informed. Watch analysis of major happenings in the political space and how it affects you. Watch Politics on Sunday. And joining me live for more perspectives is the Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Defense, Honorable Baba Jimmy Benson. Thank you for joining us on the Hallow Chambers. Thank you very much. What is your perspective on the nationwide protest? Thank you very much for, for the question. Uh, every use, every Nigerian has a right to protest. Um, uh, however, protests, we know the beginning, we don't know how it ends. And um, history has shown us that a lot of protests in Nigeria always goes the wrong way. Um, your, for instance, a protest happened, the NSAS protest happened a couple of years ago, and your TV station was burnt. And there were even um, journalists within that premises on that fateful day. Your know, lives could have been lost. Uh, you know, so protests good if it's peaceful. But nowadays, those protests are always hijacked. Now, I understand where the youths are coming from. I understand where government is coming from. So it pers it's a perspective issue. So some people, we can be watching a movie together, and in the movie you're focusing on James Bond, and some other person is focusing on the restaurant James Bond is watching, or somebody else is focusing on the car James Bond is using. So the problem we have now is a perception issue. The youths believe the government is not doing enough. The government is saying boldly that we are embarking on huge reform never seen in the history of Nigeria. Who is speaking the truth? I think both of them are speaking the truth. I think there's a huge communication gap somewhere. Uh, the amount of money corporations, governments spend on publicity and communication is humongous. But we're not doing that. Yes, we're not selling our products. We're just sitting pretty and expecting Nigerians to see what we're doing. Now, in the history of Nigeria, no government has given autonomy, financial autonomy to local governments. Now, the implication of that, nobody has carefully explained to the youth what value it will bring to them. Now, the bastion of democracy in the United States of America has works through its mayoral system, its local government system. Some people in a state don't even know who the governor is, but they know their local government chairman. That is what Ashwaji Bola Ametinumbu is bringing to Nigeria. Yes, he's bringing a catalytic change whereby the local government will be more impactful in the lives of Nigeria. It is local government who is supposed to do health, supposed to do schools, supposed to do roads, supposed to do as many things as possible. The youths can apply to the local governments for jobs, for contracts, you know. They can even come together, do joint ventures, chase uh, transactions. 
because a lot of money will be channeled down to this local government nowadays. But what do we have? We have people or youths who expect the federal government to do everything. Yes, it's local government, the state government. A lot of money in the history of Nigeria, no state gets what they get now. They all have about a 50% increase in their revenue. But still yet, we still say federal government, federal government, federal government. You know, so the communication gap is seriously missing. What is this government doing? I'm so excited about the consumer credit uh, uh, bureau. So meaning that people can go, young people, vulnerable people, Nigerians can go and buy items they need on a lease basis, right? There's a student loan as well, which means the parents, public servants, civil servants, vulnerable parents can encourage their wards to apply for a facility, which are two problems. One to pay school fees and the other one to pay for um, upkeep, upkeep. That is remarkable. And to date, we also hear that the 70% of the applicants to that are from northern Nigeria, which is also extremely good because they always say the out of school children ratio there is very, 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 very high. And how do you define good governors? Good governors is ensuring that all the tiers of government work as hard as possible to ensure the welfare and security of the people, livelihood of the people are uh, uh, protected, right? And I'll still go back to the local government autonomy thing, right? The people outside of government are greater than the people in government. But the people outside of government do not monitor what the people in government are doing effectively. Local government autonomy, local government financial autonomy should be a real test. I think their energy should be channeled towards that. Yes, let's all come together. Obedience, PDP, APC, let's come together. If we leave, we side within the local government space. Let's ensure that every dime that comes to that local government is accountable for. Let's give them KPIs. Let's tell them what the needs are. Let's attend their public hearings. Let's be more involved. If we are not involved, yes, we come back to blame the federal government of Nigeria, who has given us the enablement to foster good governance. So that's, that's what I think um, we should be doing. From your own perspective, how would you say the government is responding to the state of the nation, the state of affairs? Yes, number one is this situation is not peculiar to Nigeria alone. The American even, America even coined a phrase for it. They call it VUCA. Now we live in a world that is volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. Things are not as easy as they used to be. Remember in the 70s, we would say, ah, we need a stadium. Boom. They build the national stadium. We need a national theater. Boom. They build the national theater. They even fashioned it after a military cap. You know, nowadays, those days are over. Uh, our population is 200 million people. Uh, we're building blocks to ensure that each and every one of them is catered for. We need to fuel this population. They need to travel from point A to point B. They need to buy affordable gasoline. We need power to power them. We need health care. We need education. These are gigantic and monumental things to do. Right? How is the government faring? Uh, the government, the federal government of Nigeria, is building super highways, They're connecting the cities. They're doing things they ought to be doing. You know, I remember what JFK said that America is rich not because it has money. America is rich because its infrastructure makes its people rich. You know, that's what the president is doing. He's building super highways, connecting the dots, connecting railway from here to there. That is his job. He's doing that very credibly, credibly, credibly well. 
right? The state government needs to cascade and connect those things, do those feedings, do those health care, employ people. And so I think the presidency is top notch, right? The state governors need to step up a little bit more. They need to follow the lead of our governor, Babajide Songu. He needs to teach all of them how to connect the dots, how to make uh, an impactful uh, legacy, you know, and how to align with the vision of Mr. President. We also need to ensure that this local government freedom that we have is followed through by the people. The people become more participatory. So that I think, and another notable thing, because I'm in the defense space that Mr. President has done, he has said that all available mini military spaces, yes, bags, uh, land, be converted into farms, right? So food security is also very important. Mr. President has doubled down on the security agencies to ensure that is speedily done. Well, some of this demand by the protesters include a return of fuel subsidy regime. Do you think this is feasible? Yeah, so I, I think that there is a communication gap. You know, I spoke to the leadership of the youth uh, two days ago, and I explained to them that I saw that there's a information uh, lacuna somewhere, and I've always talked about not communicating well from the government. If the government will live by facts, evidence, statistics, if the government brings out its own side to it, uh, I wish the Minister of uh, Budget and Planning, uh, Minister Bagudu, could have a sit down with these people, yeah, with these youths, our glorious youths, yeah, our articulate youths, and he explains the state of the nation, the economy, the oil production, reasons why subsidies should be removed, I'm sure they will be convinced. Yes? The savings we've made from the subsidy removal, yes, they should also explain to them how that money is utilized. The youth may have a rethink or a different idea. You see, the day we stop learning is the day we die. So there has to be that sit down, that collaborative effort to ensure that this is the subsidy amount we've saved. This is how we're using it. This is how it will benefit you. Yes. If you talk to them, you carry them along, they may have a different uh, opinion, which the government may not have been looking at. So it fosters a win-win position. But I don't think, I think we need dialogue. I think we need a, a, a they need more insight into why subsidy uh, was removed. Among these demands is uh, the demand for job creation so as to bridge the large unemployment gap the country faces. What more can you say the government can do to appease the youth? Um, Dr. Pate, the global brand uh, who worked with the uh, Melinda Gates Foundation, yes, works with this government, yes. That alone is an achievement for administration for us to be able to attract that kind of person. And it also means that Mr. President means well. The amount of achievement that the health minister has uh, has, has done, has achieved, is phenomenal. Yes, he's been able to build many schools, he's been able to train many youths. So there are opportunities and uh, credible improvements that these guys have made in the polity but that has not been properly communicated to the youths. You know, a lot is being done. We're building blocks. Yes. It's not yet who yet. I feel that power, power, power ramping up. We need to increase, rapidly increase our power generation and distribution capacity. Because there's no world, there's no other country that we have in Nigeria. And I do not think that any country has the resources the human capital, the vibrant youth, the knowledgeable youth, 70% of them that we have in Nigeria. I don't think any other country has it in the world. So we only need to provide them good leadership, yeah, with sustainable leadership, give them power, give them the opportunity to be able to be entrepreneurial. And Nigeria's uh, progression will be uh, astronomical. 
And how would you assess um, the engagement with security agencies in handling this situation? Do you think they actually have this under control? I love protests. Um, our president also said that he loves protests. But however, if protests are turned into rage or turned into political uh, weaponization, you know, to destroy, to maim, I think uh, that is not a script that any government would follow. And I think that you should not also encroach on other people's rights. It's not block roads. Everybody has a sense of uh, uh, movement, freedom of freedom of movement. So as long as you encroach on another person's rights for him to enjoy his fundamental rights, uh, that becomes an issue right there. So what what role what what do you expect from the security agencies? Yeah, the security agencies should they've done it before. Yes. They've seen riots, they followed rioters, they've also bought pure water for the rioters, you know, they've also participated in uh, so that's the kind of riot uh, not riots, uh, peaceful protest uh that, that we want. But anything outside of that, you know, you need to also protect the other Nigerians who don't see it as a, a who, do, who see it as an encroachment of a freedom of uh, movement. Both chambers of the National Assembly had an emergency session in the course of the week. Walk us through the necessity of that action. What actually took place? Earlier in the day, we had a meeting with youth group. Uh, just a pitch to them. The APC youth uh, um, chieftain was here, Daya Israel. Uh, he had the Minister of Health, he had the Minister of Commerce and Industry. Uh, they also spoke about what government is doing. And we were all amazed at what they've done in one year. That has not been appropriately communicated to Nigerians. Second thing we had, the uh, emergency session, we had uh, to amend the budget. Not its substance, but we just needed to change some, some nomenclature in it. And the third one was we expanded the threshold for CBN from 5% to 10%. There was an uproar on the floor of the uh, House of Representatives over the bill on the Central Bank of Nigeria. What was this disagreement about? Yes, uh, the House is a bipartisan House. We have eight parties. Yes, you don't expect all of us to be on the same page at the same time. Um, we represent the majority. Um, so we're supposed to align with what our party and the government of the day proposes. The job of the legislature is to also ensure that their banana, uh, so, so we disagree to agree. Uh, eventually, uh, the motion was put to vote and the majority took the take. That is our program for the week. Do not forget to watch this episode again on Sunday at 7 a.m. Also follow TVC News on all social media handles to get the latest news and information from the National Assembly and around the world. Thank you for watching. I am Tijesu Adiri.